I've been invited to ride my RC374 Honda 6 replica in the car park track of the Sammy Miller's Museum in a few weeks time. So I've got it out, I'm gonna give it a good clean, remove the fairing and do some maintenance. And while the fairing's off, I'll show you around the bike. The last time I rode my RC374 replica, I noticed that the clutch was grabbing as I pulled away. I thought it's a lovely day. Let's push the bike in the garden, remove the fairing and clean the clutch plates. The clutch sits outside of the engine casings and runs in fresh air. These are known as dry clutches and are very common in racing applications and even some road bikes. The first thing I have to do is remove the fairing, which is held on with nine screws. The seven upper fairing screws are made from aluminium bar and the two lower ones that screw into the exhaust system are made from titanium. And here's how I made an aluminium screw. The first thing I did was put a piece of 25mm bar in the chuck. Then I cut a 6mm diameter protrusion where I will be later cutting the thread. After a few cuts, I stopped to take a measurement and I'm still quite a way over six millimetres. After a few more cuts, I checked the diameter of my micrometer and it's exactly six millimetres. That's just perfect. And even Charlie Weaver's excited and has to have a little tipple. The next thing I'm going to do is partially part off the screw with a parting off tool. So I remove the cutting tool from the lathe turret and replace it with a parting tool, tightening it securely. I start to part off the screw and go down about halfway, then remove the parting tool and replace the side cutter to chamfer the back of the screw. This is easier to do with the screw still attached to its piece of bar than it would be once I cut the thread. And here you can see the chamfer, so the next thing to do is cut the thread. I'll be using a 6mm die to cut the thread, so I put it into the die holder, offer it up to the protrusion, holding it square with the drill chuck, applying a gentle pressure and a bit of oil and as you turn, keep the pressure on and it will hold it square. After a couple of turns, the chuck can be withdrawn and you can just cut the thread in a normal fashion. There we go, I'm really pleased with that. That looks just perfect. So now I can continue to part off the screw. With the screw parted off, I put it back in the chuck and take a fine skim off the end surface. There we go, that's looking much nicer. So the next thing I need to do is cut the slot for the screwdriver. So I screw on two M6 nuts so I can grip the screw in my vise without damaging the thread. Using my hacksaw, I carefully cut the slot in the center. When the slot's cut, I use a very fine needle file just to clean up the edges. Then I can take it out into my buffing machine and give it a good polish. And here's the finished screw, all ready to fit. But as I glance around to the kitchen, I can see Tracy in there cooking. So I pop in to have a look to see what she's doing. And she's making Viennese whale cupcakes. 
like biscuit cookie things. Really, really nice. So first she cuts out some butter, puts it into the mixer with a bit of sugar. Gives it a whiz up, maybe a couple of times. Then she checks the instructions and it says to add some flour. But before you add it, you have to put it through a sieve because apparently it gets lumpy. I can't see any lumps at all. It looks perfectly okay to me, but she still does it anyway. She then adds a pinch of salt, followed by the freshly sieved flour, spooning in gently so as not to make any mess. After more mixing, she adds a bit of vanilla essence from a bottle, just pours in a little bit. That's about right. That's just perfect. After even more mixing, she puts the mix into a syringe. It's a bit like putting grease into a grease gun. I find that job really hard. But anyway, she does it quite nicely without making any mess. Screws on the top and then you squidge it out into the cupcake cases. And the final thing to do is put a cherry right in the middle. There we go. They're all ready for cooking. So she puts them in the oven for 20 minutes and they rise up nicely. And then when she gets them out, they look just perfect. But I'm not allowed to have one because they're too hot and crumbly. So we put them on a cooling tray for later. Back in the garden, I'm removing the fairing for my RC374. And as I said earlier, the two lower screws are made from titanium and I've actually stamped them with EX for exhaust so I don't get them mixed up with the aluminium screws. And to do this, I use my number stamps. Number stamps come in all sizes, and I just use these small ones with a light hammer, gently tap, and it will stamp into the titanium. This is grade five titanium, so it's relatively ductile. I continue to remove the aluminium screws. and also the six screws on the lower aluminium infill panel. These screws are also machined from aluminium bar. The fairing can now be removed from the bike. I feel like I'm being watched. So I look up and there's a pigeon sat on the tree right above me, making a right racket. With the fairing removed, I can easily get to the clutch. So the first thing I have to do is remove these four screws with my eight millimeter socket. I loosen the central adjusting nut, then I can pull off the end plate followed by the clutch plates. As I remove the clutch plates, some of them feel a bit greasy on the surface, like some oil's got on them somehow. But anyway, I'll give them a good clean with some brake cleaner and that'll soon remove it. And here you can see some oily residue on the aluminium end plate. The brake cleaner easily removes all the oil from the clutch plates. The friction plates look much better now, so now I can clean the steel plates. I give them a degrease with my, with my brake cleaner first and then rub them with some 320 grade Abronet cloth just to give them a bit of a rougher surface for the clutch plates to bite on. And after a final degrease for brake cleaner, they're ready to be fitted back onto the bike. Reassembling the clutch is quite straightforward. You simply put in a friction plate, followed by a steel plate, followed by a friction plate, followed by a steel plate, until they're all in. And then you put the aluminium plate on the end, 
do up the four screws with the four springs and reattach the central adjusting nut. I'll give it a quick jab on the starter to check it all spins freely and check the clutch operation and it feels great. Before I replace the fairing, let's have a little walk around the bike and I'll show you some of its features. When I made the frame, I made sure the engine was leaning at the correct angle compared with the standard Honda engine and also the distance from the crankshaft to the rear wheel is the same. Sitting between the exhaust system is a finned pre-cooler for the radiator. And here's the water pump on the side of the engine. I managed to hide a battery underneath the swinging arm in front of the rear wheel. This is to work the electric starter motor and the points ignition. There's no alternator fitted to charge the battery, but the battery will run the engine for about three hours, so that's just perfect. I made the electronic rev counter and managed to hide the feed wires inside a hollow drive cable, creating a more authentic look. And the red line is fully adjustable, just like the original. And here you can see the front brake cable splitter that I made from titanium. It's now time to refit the fairing, so I pick it up and offer it over the bike, pushing it past the engine so it snaps into place, and then inserting all the screws and tightening them up finger tight. With all the screws fitted, I go around and tighten them up with my flat blade screwdriver. And the last thing to do is fit the fairing infill panel at the front with its six retaining screws. It's getting quite late now and very soon the hedgehog has come out but tonight there's some funny goings on one comes out there's already one there in the water and he's not impressed so he gives him a proper shove and he shoots off in one direction and the other one goes off in the other direction really strange i load the rc374 into my trailer alongside my flying milliard 5000 cc v twin and we're all set to go we soon arrive at Sammy Miller's Motorcycle Museum, unload the bikes and get ready for the parade lap around the car park. enjoyed the video on my Honda RC374 and I especially liked riding with Sammy Miller 
in his museum down in the new forest we had great fun and don't forget it'd be really nice if you'd like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and in my next rc374 video i'll be showing you how i made the seat tank and fairing from sheet aluminium